Okay. Hey, folks, this is Opaloid. I'm here with host Eric ENTP uh, and also Susie, who is an INTP. In the background is Spacey, uh, who is a fellow INTP, and I'm likely to be an INFJ. Um, today, we'd like to discuss with INTPs what their viewpoint is towards FI. Um, so INTPs, TI leading or TI DOM, uh, and their FI is in the eighth slot. So, what's your what's your take on your own FI, and what's your take on other people's FI? Um, own FI, sometimes it's obvious, other times it's not obvious at all. Mm -hmm. Finally, to find the reason for why that why you might be feeling that way, because it's not obvious. <laughs> uh, in other people, it can sometimes be unpredictable mm -hmm. <clears throat> and sometimes you see it coming other times you have no idea what just happened when do you feel like you use your own FI uh, when I can decide if I should do something maybe I'm not sure Mm. I've, I've actually, I think, pinpointed at least part of what my FI does to, for me. And that's um, a really good example of it is one time when I was in high school when I made, I said something like kind of nasty to some girl and I, I actually ended up making her cry. And I felt like really, really shitty about it. And that's that's what FI does for like an INTP at least. It's what it's what keeps you being nice. Do you ever find yourself using FI to justify things? Only if I'm mad. Do you explicitly justify things with your feelings then? Or do you unawarely justify them and later on go, oh I was I was just fine with my feelings, but I didn't realize it. Well, it's more like uh, this person did blah 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 first. I will not do something. That's a justice-based argument. That's not a feelings-based argument. <coughs> well, is it not if I feel if I'm angry? Yes. But. The justifications are justice-based in the sense that they did this first. Yeah, that's the thing with FI. FI is like this annoying little voice in the back of my head, which I rationalize. Do you feel as though people sometimes attempt intentionally to embarrass you? Mm, not often, but if people dislike me, that might be something they would try to do. For social positioning. If someone were to attack you, would they more effect effectively attack you by saying you don't know the value of things or by saying you don't have social grace? What do you mean with value of things? I mean, I mean, you'd, uh, you let the dog run off and get eaten by a bear because you don't care enough to take care to ha prevent its harm to it. Mm, that will bother me more because the social graces is not something. It's like I know I rub some people the wrong way. It's just nothing I can do about it. But that I wouldn't care about an animal that bothers me more. Because then there's no way I can prove them wrong. Which would bother you more if you were being accused of, if you were being blamed for the dog because of the lack of, you lacked sufficient value for it to prevent the harm, or because you lacked sufficient to eat? You made, that you made the effort to prevent the harm, but you did it, you botched it by doing it wrong, and that's why the dog got, got out and got eaten. Which would bother you more? The dog got eaten? Um... But if I didn't care enough, because that indicates it was intentional. 
Okay. You didn't care enough or um, illogically concluded that because it was summertime, no bears would be out. That would be just ridiculous. I couldn't take that seriously. Okay. <laughs> um, not care enough or um, not remember that the time was to close the gate so the dog didn't get out. Well, that's something which could have happened. Okay. And, uh... And if it was an accident, of course I would feel bad, but if I was then accused that, like, I, let's say I did forget, and the reality was that I forgot, and then they tried to frame it as I didn't care, no, but this, in this instance, though, in this instance, they say right off the bat, listen, we know how much you love that dog. There's no dispute in that. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm busting your chops just because you forgot. And you just be like, well, I forgot. Okay, then how about this? The reason that dog got eaten is because you are so uncreative, you couldn't even come up with the possibility the dog might get eaten. <laughs> That's also a stupid statement. <laughs> how about... You're so bad at realizing what's important that you prioritize feeding and giving the dog water over keeping it caked in, and that's why it got out and got eaten. What's important? That the dog is dead now? It's gone? Uh, okay. It's non-existent? So, all right, so what you just demonstrated, really, <coughs> was the exact set of... Um, how to react to critic? How a type reacts to criticism, given on this, depending on the slot thing. The one that bothers you most is your insecurity function, and um, it, it, it's just like right down the line. It was perfect. Everything you said was exactly what I, what I said about predicted about the, uh, the how you react to criticism thing. So it's going to be like your dominant function. You're going to go, well, that's just ridiculous. Your second function. You're gonna if it's if it's a if it's a correct critique you'll begrudgingly accept it. If so, it would have to be specific correct critique of your lack of creativity or something. But if it's just a, sort of a general critique or some example like that, it's gonna be the same thing. It's kind of ridiculous. If it's if it's your uh, if it's your ignoring function, then it's going to be. Uh, I don't remember what you said for the te one when I asked like that you didn't know how to do it. You'd say, oh, you just contrasted and said, you focused again on the one that, you didn't talk about TE, you talked about, you ignored it, and you said, well, the FI one would be worse because it's intentional. Yeah, I made two different uh, scenarios, or like, well, what did I do? I added more shit to it to make it something else. Right, so basically you ignored the TE part, you focused on the FI part again, and then, okay, so then with the um, FE one, you dismissed it as not really very important compared to the FI one. Uh, with the any one, uh, yeah, any one you said it was kind of ridiculous. The SI one, you admitted that you might actually do that wrong, and so that was potentially factual, and therefore they could bust your chops about that. That's your third function slot, which is where you you inherently feel that you have the most growth potential, and so um, that was very very re revelatory. I would type Susie as an INTP based on that. Opoid, I've I've taken over here. Uh, do you want to take over again here for a bit? But I did have some questions um, to do with uh, the, the TI and FI and whether they ever bridged, because you, you talked about um, very early on in, in this recording, you talked about how if you're unsure about something you may then at that point use your fi but you weren't really sure and i wondered as introverted judging functions in and of themselves do you think that they are in fact yes, but, but the thing the, the thing i said about that eric called me out on my bullshit because i don't actually do that all oh, right i'm sorry i was what's the word i was away sorry, for a while fine. um it's it's there like I'm, there's a sort of awareness of it, but I, it doesn't really guide me. It doesn't. 
That's what mm-hmm. I'm saying. It doesn't it doesn't enter your justifications, and your justifications and your FI are closely linked, so they tend to mirror each other. Yeah, and if they conflict, I have to. I might sit with it for a long time, and I might even like TI can bullshit itself as well. So I might at some point find a way of bullshitting myself into doing what I actually want. Yeah, what I was getting at with my specific question, I don't know if Eric asked you this or not, but do you think they're sort of like the TI and the FI are melded together in in some capacity uh, as though there's a space within the mind or the brain or whatever, which is um, introverted judging? And if you imagine that that's a pool and there's two colors and one is the the T, the TI, and one color is the FI, do you think... They operate like that, or do you think they're completely segregated off from, from one another? Well, they both relate to my SI mm. to some some extent. Mm. Can you expand upon that? Mm. My own experiences, like you could call it, different kinds of knowledge, memory, past experiences, mm-hmm. um, remembering how I felt. Uh, it seems like people who are actually FI users have m- way better access to remembering how something made made them feel. Mm. Uh, I rarely have much of that awareness, unless it was something very profound. So, uh, for you as a, as an INTP, how do you actually see the cognitive functions? Do you see that there's an interplay of sort of like nodes or? Or do you actually see that there's sort of like um, like pools of water which sometimes mix together and yeah, don't I, I don't together? I don't I don't see it like that at all. It's more um, it could be anything from inner inner dialogue to a physical sensation that something is off. Mm-hmm. But that's that's more more. That's as much physical and chemical as it is other things. Mm-hmm. So, you, you uh, for you as an INTP, uh, do you believe that sort of like there's a supremacy of materialism that it's actually all neuron based? So, cognitive processes are things which are, are resident in in and of like neurons, the brain, uh, brain regions, etc. Like you know, as per Nadi, uh, Dario Nadi, and his work, or do you think there's they're more sort of like all encompassing of the self? No, so I mean, what he has found is that personality and those things are connected. Mm-hmm. But there are clear patterns on how uh, certain types use their brains, mm-hmm. so that there is biology involved. Is obvious. This is not just metaphysics. And it lends, mm-hmm. it lends credence to the configurational man, nature of personality as opposed to uh, as opposed to quantity on like big five basically is a bar graph okay you've got this much yeah. of that right whereas it's actually type is best described as configurational in other words you express your brain activity in this kind of configuration or that kind of configuration which is more consistent with the cognitive function model. But regardless of that, Spacey had something to say that I thought was very interesting, and I want him to say that. Go ahead and say that, Spacey, again. What? That, um... I guess based on Eric's conversation with Susie earlier, you, I think you can see pretty clearly demonstrated that uh, the INTP, even though you might think that they'll value FE over, over FI, since FI is way down in their eighth slot, You'll will still end up valuing FI over FE in most cases, um, and we certainly won't value TE. And so I guess we'll kind of be valuing introverted judging over extroverted judging in in general. Um, I I think we're mm. more conscious of no, FI I, things I, than FE things most of the time. That depends what you mean by valuing, because. I don't think we care too much unless it's criticized. Because generally, we do have some concern for how other people see us. 
But you didn't Which hear is that much about FE criticism. Hmm? Okay, well, he pointed out that, number one, you didn't care about FE criticism when it conflicted with FI uh, criticism. And number two, uh, I would point out that ultimately, if, if you genuinely hurt somebody by being carelessly callous and saw them burst into tears, your response would be authentic. And that, that would be a more driving concern than would be the social grace aspect of it. So yeah, you, then it would be words, oh shit. You 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 would feel bad regardless of any if whether anybody else were if any third party were there to see you and judge you about it. If you knew that the event would, you know, like shortly thereafter that other person died, and so nobody could ever share the event with anybody else, you'd still feel bad about it because um, and you'd never share it. And it wouldn't, and you wouldn't share it with other people. Maybe the not sharing it with other people part would be fe. The feeling bad about it part would be fi. So the thing yeah. is, my I think he's correct, and it is consistent with the notion that your insecurity function is going to be um, aspirational as well as kind of hatey. So you're going to kind of hate on people who do that thing really well because uh, it, you're aspirational towards it. So, for example, I hate on I, I really hate the idea of like ESTP males going out and slaying the puss with their bullshit. It seems, it just offends me, right? But I'm also kind of aspirational to it, like, God damn it, I kind of wish I could go out and slay the puss with my bullshit. <laughs> you know, so there's, there's that quality to it, I think. And I think that's what it means to say that we value our one and eight more than we value our four, or we value one or eight. <coughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I was listening, uh, and I want to just move the conversation on to um, your perception of FI and others. Um, I missed parts of what Eric was asking you before, but uh, am I right in thinking, or, or did he actually touch upon your perception of, of FI and others, or not? I touched upon mm. No, but... <clears throat> <laughs> I had <to> <laughs> Fuck you, Eric. <laughs> I can see Eric. Oh dear! What? It's not linked to you. It was, uh, it's Eric. He was he was doing an ET impression of uh, extended finger. Um, so here, here's what what happens. Okay, let's say uh, I did make someone feel bad or whatever. Then it first it makes me uncomfortable. Then I need to evaluate what happened. Like okay, I fucked up. Mm -hmm. make it right or whatever or no i didn't do anything bad fuck you on your fi your fi is wrong mm -hmm. i shouldn't feel bad you're making me feel bad i shouldn't feel bad yeah i get you i, I i'm curious uh, i've got like a visual image in my mind of like uh, fi and another person outside of yourself there's the ti which is you and then there's the fi inside of you um, and I wondered sort of when you come across uh, other people outside of you using that FI, does it sort of like tap into or trigger your own FI in any capacity? No, generally not. Uh, of course, if someone put on an emotional display, I might read more into it. But most of the time, you can't see what the difference is. Mm. If both people are calm and having a normal conversation. Right. Uh, now, the reason I'm asking is, um, Eric, when uh, he's interacting with FI users, uh, for example, Source ENFP, mm. um, I think Eric appreciates the, the FI being sort of like drawn out or touched upon. And I wondered, do you, you as an INTP and with the FI in your eighth, do you feel that when you're sort of like interacting with um, FI DOMs or FI auxiliaries, in any capacity that it sort of it allows you to engage with your own fi more or or does that not happen ever or does it be like uh, eric could you explain what he means uh, yeah you're muted by the way okay so when oh talks about touching upon your fi what he means is <laughs> He, he wants to know what it feels like to touch upon your moisture. Uh, <laughs> how moist is it? How viscous? He wants to get a feeling for your <laughs> FI. 
What? Oh, Jesus. Okay, when you speak to FI people and they draw out your FI, as was mentioned here, how does that work, Eric? When FI users draw out your FI and touch the phone? Uh, um, I, I'll tell you in one second. Susie was saying mean things to Blake. Who is this night. Blake gentleman? ENTJ. Okay. That wasn't mean. Oh, oh, see the one who thought he was an ENTP? Yeah, well, okay. you were. Is he the stop group to Blake? I was super yeah. nice and fair and just. Yeah. <laughs> right, you were hitting him with the wrongness stick, Susie. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault he was so wrong I... and he has been so wrong over time then the, the nice end of the stick was worn out right that's called the carrot actually the nice end of the <laughs> stick is called the carrot <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're touching upon my moisture I believe I, I don't know what happens when FI people bring out my FI because to me it doesn't seem a noteworthy event particularly other people are like, oh, that's some rich emotional content. I saw that on one of the comments on a video recently. Mm-hmm. Like, I saw that as well. You know that comment I'm yeah. talking about? Uh, I thought, okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta admit that, like, um, I experienced it in the same way, it, it, strangely. But it seems as though it's very, very, very valuable for. The FI users that have been watching, and that's really good that they're sort of like, well, keying in and they're engaged and whatever it might be. Okay, it's easy to make me cry. Go ahead, Susie. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Back back to uh, how I see it. I don't really experience it as if they go there with me. Um, what What I'm wondering is, do they bring it out of you? No. Do they make you want to swim in your FI? No. <laughs> to bathe in it. <laughs> Why would anyone want to make me do that? 